Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. It is nice to meet the pastors, theological students, and the saints who are attending today's Shincheonji Online Seminar. I'm Kang Tae-un, the presider of today's event. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who came to the Shincheonji Online Seminar. The prophecy of the revelation and the words of its physical fulfillment, these are the words that all believers must know. It is currently being transmitted around the world through YouTube. Shincheonji Online Seminar clearly explains the book of Revelation, which has been so difficult to understand. It is currently receiving great attention from the world, not only believers, but also many pastors around the world. In fact, many overseas pastors have expressed the gratitude and signed MOUs with Shincheonji with the will to convey this word of revelation as well. I deeply appreciate that so many pastors have signed MOUs with Shincheonji. As such, I am deeply moved by the fact that pastors long for the truth and love the saints, so they want to become one with Shincheonji and convey the words of this revelation. The door to us Shincheonji is open, so I hope pastors who want to enter into MOUs with us can contact us anytime and we hope we can do this work of testifying revelation together. Also, I believe that more you hear this word of revelation, the more you will understand. The fact that book of revelation is not a difficult book or a complicated book, but very logical words that can be clearly understood through the Bible. I hope you will receive great grace and precious enlightenment of God in the hearts of all the people who attended this seminar. First, let us all pray with the same heart. To our Holy Father God, who is full of love and grace, Today, the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, as you allow this Shincheonji Online Seminar to be open to the world, we truly give you all thanks and glory. For 2,000 years, this word of Revelation, the New Covenant, has been spread, but it has now been fulfilled in today's time and appeared. And the promised pastor, who has seen and heard the events at the very place of the fulfillment, is now testifying it plainly. So through these video seminars, so many people around the world are being able to listen to these precious gospel. So Father God, please receive glory forever and ever. Please allow all the pastors and theological students and saints gathered at this time to be filled with your love and grace so that they can truly realize these precious news. Today, through the Matthew tribe leader, the words of Revelation 12 will be testified. The word that has been learned through the promised pastor, the chairman, will be testified. So therefore, God please be with us and please manage this time. It is the time to begin. Until the time we finish, we truly believe you'll be with us. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. This seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. Last time, we learned the words of Revelation 11. As God always fulfills what He promised, as we realize this work of God, I trust our hearts were burning and it was a time of grace. Today, the words of Revelation 12 will be delivered. It is a chapter about the war between God and dragon not only realizing the result of this war, but also realizing who are the entities, the physical entities of this chapter, let us pay attention and be able to understand well. It is the most important time now to listen to the words of Revelation. The Matthew tribe leader, Jung chun Seok tribe leader, will be greeted. Let us give a round of applause. Greetings, pastors, theological students, and saints around the world, who love God and Jesus and have the hope for heaven and eternal life. It is truly a pleasure to meet you all. And I sincerely thank you for attending the Shincheonji Online Seminar. My name is Jung Chun Seok, and I'm the Matthew tribe leader who was chosen in the name of Matthew 
the disciple of Jesus. I first heard the word of Shincheonji after receiving a flyer that showed that Shincheonji taught the word of God. What I was always wanted to know and was always curious about were clearly testified through the chairman of Shincheonji. It was amazing and surprising that all the answers would come only from the Bible. I am now carrying a life of faith in Shincheonji as I follow the words of prophecy and its physical fulfillment. Right now, the whole world is surprised by the Shincheonji Revelation Seminar. So far, more than 1 million people have watched this seminar, and hundreds of MOUs have been signed between Shincheonji and pastors worldwide. We truly thank everyone who is together with us. Today, I will testify the words of revelation and physical fulfillment that Chairman Lee Mani of Shincheonji Church of Jesus saw and heard. At this time, through the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, God's new covenant, the unprecedented word will testify the physical fulfillment. Today, we'll be on Revelation chapter 12. The title of Revelation 12 is a war between God and the dragon. It is about the war that takes place when revelation is fulfilled. The testimony of the witness who saw and heard at the very location of the physical fulfillment of Revelation 12 will be conveyed today. I hope you will listen with the understanding that these are the actual events that have been fulfilled. Firstly, I would like to talk about the important key points of Revelation 12. There are three main points. First important point is that there are the three entities that appear in Revelation 12, the betrayer, the destroyer, and savior that all appear in one place called heaven as promised in Revelation. Secondly, Revelation 12 allows us to distinguish and confirm who is the betrayer, the destroyer, and the savior. That content is well described in Revelation 12. Thirdly, as a male child who is to rule all nations, fights and overcomes a dragon, salvation, power, kingdom, and authority of God, of God is fulfilled. As the kingdom of God and the authority of Christ takes place in this chapter, I hope we can understand that Revelation 12 is a very important chapter as we listen to today's word. Then, now let us read the words of Revelation 12, verse 1 to 6. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. His tail swept the third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all nations with an iron scepter, and her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Yes, as we have read, there is a sign in heaven, and this is referring to the appearance of the three entities in this place called heaven. The woman clothed in the sun, moon, and stars, the red dragon, and the child born by the woman. Where will they all be at? It is a place called heaven. Then, could there such a thing happen in the natural sky, in the nature of this world? If a real woman is clothed with the sun, wouldn't she be totally burnt? Also, the dragon has seven heads and ten horns. But there is no actual animal like this either, right? Therefore, this should be viewed as something that is spiritual, not physical. Then what is the heaven mentioned in this chapter? In the Bible, there are two heavens. It is in the spiritual world, or in the physical world. The heaven of the spiritual world is the kingdom of God, the spiritual world of heaven, just like what Apostle John saw and heard when he was moved in spirit in Revelation 4. 
The heaven of the physical world is a tabernacle of God's chosen people on earth. Then, as there is a sign in heaven in Revelation 12, where would this heaven be? This heaven is a tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands. It was a place where the seven stars of Revelation 1, 2, and 3 were at. It was a place God distinguished from the world and was together with. The reality of heaven in today's time of fulfillment of Revelation, it was a tabernacle temple at the base of Mount Cheonggye in Gwacheon, Republic of Korea. These are the actual photos of the tabernacle temple at that time. The reason why the physical entity can be testified like this is because there is a promised pastor who has seen and heard these events. Also, at this time when the sign in heaven appeared, you would have seen how the red dragon, the beast with seven heads and ten horns, was already inside the tabernacle of heaven. However, in Revelation 13, we can see this beast comes out from the sea and enters into the tabernacle of heaven. Therefore, let us understand that the events of Revelation 13 occurred before the events of Revelation 12. Then, who would be this woman clothed with the sun and stars inside of heaven? First of all, let's understand the meaning of sun and stars. As the heaven was a tabernacle, therefore the sun and stars would also be spiritual. The sun and stars are referring to God's chosen people inside the tabernacle. In Genesis 37, 9-11, the family of Jacob were figuratively described as the sun and stars. The sun and stars of Jacob's family were symbolizing the chosen people of God. In today's time of fulfillment of Revelation, the sun and stars are referring to the saints of the Church of the Seven Golden Lampstand. Then the woman with the sun and stars, this will also not be a physical woman, right? This woman is referring to the pastor who was leading the church of the seven golden lampstand. Then what will be the reason why the pastor is figuratively described as a woman? Just like a physical woman gives birth and raises a physical child, a pastor receives the seed of God's word and gives birth to saints and raises them as spiritual children. Then who would be the physical reality of the woman cloaked with the sun and stars today at this time of Revelation's fulfillment? This was a representative pastor of the Tabernacle Temple on the base of Mount Cheonggye in Gwacheon, Republic of Korea that appeared in 1966. I will simply refer him as a representative pastor. Next, then who is the child that the woman with the sun and stars is pregnant with? The woman with the sun and stars was a pastor, therefore this child would also not be a physical child, right? This child the woman is pregnant with is a spiritual child who was born through the seed of God's word. It was a congregation member whom the pastor of the tabernacle temple has spiritually given birth to. The woman being pregnant and crying out in pain in Revelation 12 shows how the prophecy of Genesis 3 verse 16 is spiritually fulfilled. It was stated that the woman's pain of childbearing will be greatly increased. Next, it states that there is another sign that appeared in heaven, which is a red dragon that entered into heaven. It's a different sign from the one that was before, therefore it's called another sign. But the appearance of the red dragon in heaven is very strange, isn't it? It has seven heads, ten horns, and also its tail swept the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. Could there be an actual beast like this in the world? Therefore, we must also view this as spiritual right. Then what will be the identity of the red dragon that entered into heaven? The identity? It is Satan the devil. In Revelation 12 verse 9 and Revelation 20 verse 2, the, ver the dragon is seized and he was actually the ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan. As this dragon is called the ancient serpent, it is the same serpent that deceived Eve in Genesis 3. It was a devil that tested Jesus in the wilderness at the time of the first coming, also the evil spirit that entered the Pharisees and teachers of the law. When revelation is fulfilled, the dragon who ruled the world became one with the beast with seven heads and ten horns. It is a destroyer who invaded and destroyed the tabernacle of heaven. Then what would be the seven heads that the red dragon has? The dragon was Satan the devil. Therefore, the seven heads that are with the dragon are the seven pastors who belong to Satan. In Isaiah 29 verse 10, 
It says, heads are the prophets. So therefore, it's the ruler or pastor that leads congregation members. In Revelation 17, 9 to 10, the seven heads are the seven hills and seven kings. The seven hills were referring to churches, and seven kings were referring to pastors. Then what would be the ten horns that are with the seven heads? They wouldn't be physical horns, right? The ten horns were referring to the ten elders who belong to Satan's pastors. Just like a horn is attached to the head of an animal, and the horn symbolizes authority as used as a weapon, the person who has authority by belonging to the pastor, who is the head, is being expressed as a horn. In Revelation 17 verse 12, it states that the ten horns are kings but without a kingdom. So it was spiritually referring to the people who only have authorities. Next, it states that the tail has swept one-third of the stars from the sky and flung them to the earth. Can a tail really fling stars from the sky to the earth? Also, would there really be such long tails? Of course not. Then, what is the meaning of this tail of the dragon? In Isaiah 9 verse 15, the tail was referring to the false prophet who belongs to Satan. The reality of this tale were the 17 evangelists of the tabernacle temple. They are like the images in Revelation 13 and also the tale that belongs to the mounted troops in Revelation 9. Then, what does it mean that one-third of the scars of the sky are flung down to the earth? This was referring to how the false pastors will make one-third of the congregation members of the Tabernacle Temple of the seven golden lampstand to return back to mere flesh without the living spirit. As they have forsaken the first love who is Jesus, the saints of the Tabernacle Temple become deceived by false pastors and fallen from heaven to earth. It is the same event of how their spirits are gradually dying one-third at a time as they receive punishment in Revelation 8. Next, let's find out about the group of the red dragon that entered the tabernacle of heaven. This can be explained in three parts. Firstly, in Revelation 13, they are the group of the beast with seven heads and ten horns that trample the saints of the tabernacle of heaven for 42 months. In Revelation 2, they are the same entity as the Nicolaitans of Satan. In Revelation 17 and 18, they are Babylon that deceive all nations with the maddening wine of adultery. Although they are expressed differently in each chapters, when we look at Revelation as a whole, we must understand they are one same entity. They are the group of the dragon. Then what will be the reality of this group of the red dragon? It is the Stewardship Education Center that appeared in today's time. Their organization is referred as a nation of demons, Babylon. Just like how Babylon destroyed physical Israel at the time of the Old Testament, an organization like the nation of demons Babylon appears at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. It destroys Tabernacle Temple, who were the chosen people of God. They were the ones that deceived all nations and ruled the world. Then next, it is stated that the dragon is trying to devour the woman's child the moment it was born. What would be the reason for this? The reason is because the child is the one who will fight and overcome the dragon and take away all of dragon's authority and rule all nations. Satan always tries to stop the appearance of God's pastor in every era. But we must remember that the Bible will certainly be fulfilled according to God's will and plan. We must know that Satan disrupts and persecutes in order to fulfill its own purpose. Just as Satan tries to devour this child, we can see even in the previous eras, at the time of Moses, the Egyptian king Pharaoh tried to kill the child. And also at the time of the first coming, King Herod also tried to kill all the boys under two years old. But let's remember that despite these events, God will always fulfill His words and we must check what has been fulfilled according to the word. 
Now, in verse 5 and 6, the male child who will rule all nations with the iron scepter is brought up before the throne of God, and the woman who gave birth to the child flees to the desert. This would also be a spiritual event, not a physical one, right? Some pastors state that this woman is referring to the church and the child that was born was Jesus. Then, how can the church flee to the desert and be taken care of after giving birth to Jesus? This is not possible, right? So we are able to know that this is actually a wrong understanding. Then, when is the time when the male child will rule all nations? That is the time after he fights and overcomes the group of the dragon. Furthermore, it is referring to the time after the 42 months when the period of destruction comes to an end. Then, what is the iron scepter that the child uses in order to rule all nations after fighting and overcoming the dragon? The iron scepter is the word of God and the eternal authority to rule all nations. Iron scepter is an iron rod. However, it wouldn't be referring to a physical rod, right? Also, iron scepter is a symbol of strength that is strong like an iron, meaning it is eternal. Also, there is someone who receives this iron scepter. In Revelation 2, 26-27, it is the one who overcomes that receives this iron scepter, and Jesus is the one who promised to give it to the one who overcomes. Then, the time when it is received, it will be when the one has fought and overcame, right? That very time of overcoming is fulfilled through the words of Revelation 12, verse 11. This means in Revelation 12, the event of victory is fulfilled. In Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus continued to urge to overcome, and he promised to give the iron scepter to the one who overcomes. But in this chapter of Revelation 12, there is the victory. This is the event of victory over the devil for the first time in 6,000 years. As the group of the dragon deceived and possessed all nations, only by fighting and overcoming the group of the dragon, all nations can be returned and ruled by God. From the moment the child overcome, he becomes the one who has an iron scepter to rule all nations. If this is fulfilled today, isn't this something that we must absolutely know? It is something we must know in our life of faith. Furthermore, we hope that we are the ones who can realize this through this Revelation seminar. Then, who is the male child that rule all nations with the iron scepter? It is the one who fought and overcame the dragon in Revelation 12, and thereby becomes a promised pastor according to Jesus' promise in Revelation 2 and 3. He is a promised pastor who sits together on Jesus' throne according to Revelation 3 verse 21. Also, it was the one who fights and overcomes the group of the dragon. However, not anyone can be the one who overcomes. In order to become the one who overcomes, he must fight and overcome the group of the dragon who invaded the tabernacle of heaven. He becomes a new Israel, and he must establish the twelve tribes. Then, when is the time when this child is born? We must know that it is within the period of 42 months when the dragon trampled and destroyed the tabernacle of heaven. The birth of this child is a new thing recorded in Jeremiah 31 verse 22. It is the event of the fulfillment of the woman surrounding a man. This event was referred as a creation of the new thing. Then there must be a reason why it's called the new thing, right? That's because until this point, there was the events of the chosen people being destroyed due to its betrayal. However, through the appearance of this child, now there can be the work of salvation. Therefore, the appearance of this child becomes a new thing, and this leads to the creation of God's kingdom, the new heaven, new earth. Also, the dragon tries to devour the child the moment he was born. However, this child is the main character that will rule all nations, therefore he is taken up before God's throne.
The woman who gave birth to the child who ruled all nations flees to the desert. This will be explained in more detail in verse 14. Then, what will be the evidence that we can know the identity of the one overcomes? There are three main things. Firstly, it is about the timing that it must be when the red dragon has invaded and entered the tabernacle of heaven, and secondly, the place where he is born, he must be born in the tabernacle of heaven. And thirdly, he must be born from the woman with the sun, moon, and stars. These three content are the very important evidence that allows us to know who is the male child. Only the one who has appeared according to this can be the promised pastor, the one who overcomes. Then, as we saw so far, Revelation 12 was about the content that in one place, heaven, there were three entities that appeared, the woman, the dragon, and the child. Let's summarize the physical reality of these three entities. The reality of heaven where the three entities appear. It wasn't the natural sky. It was a church of the seven golden lamps and tabernacle temple in Gwacheon, Republic of Korea. At this place, three entities appeared. Firstly, the reality of the woman who has given birth to the child, that is a woman with the sun, moon, and stars. The reality of this woman was a representative pastor of tabernacle temple. And the reality of the group of the dragon that invaded the tabernacle, it was a stewardship education center. Just as they were called stewardship, they taught and raised up pastors. However, they destroyed the tabernacle of God's kingdom. And thirdly, the reality of the child. It was the one who fights and overcomes a group of the dragon. It is the one who overcomes New John. Just as all the prophecies of the Old Testament prophets were all fulfilled by Jesus, even all the prophecies in the New Testament have all become fulfilled today. The prophecy does not have any physical entities only with the prophecy. But as the prophecies are fulfilled, physical fulfillment appears, and that is why physical entities are there today. When the physical fulfillment appears, there cannot be any lies. The reason why the physical entities can be testified is because there is a promised pastor who has seen and heard the events at the location of the fulfillment, and therefore he knows the physical entities of the fulfillment. Let's continue and read Revelation 12, 7-9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Yes, the content of these verses are telling us about the war in heaven. The place is heaven, and it talks about the war that is happening at that place. Who is the war between? It is the war between Michael and the dragon. As it is a war between the archangel Michael and the dragon, Satan and the devil, this wouldn't be a physical war, but it is a spiritual war. Then where will this heaven be where the war is happening? It is not a natural sky. It is the same heaven mentioned in verse 1. It is a tabernacle temple, the church with the seven golden lamps there. It is at this place the spiritual war happens. Then even this war in heaven wouldn't be a physical war, but a spiritual war. Then this is about the war of doctrine, that is the war between the words. Therefore, the war of doctrine is a war that the Bible is referring to. In Ephesians 6, 10-17, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil. And in order to be victorious in this war, we must wear the full armor of God's truth, it said. Knowing that the war inside the Bible is a physical war in the world, 
And in the last days, there will be World War III, or the Earth will be destroyed by a nuclear weapon, we're able to know that these are all wrong, isn't it? Then now, we will find out about who are the entities that battle in this war. We will separate the spiritual world from the physical world. In the spiritual world, Michael fights against the dragon, and in the physical world, there's a child that fights against the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Now, Michael and the child and his brothers, this side will be the army of God. And the dragon and the group of the beasts with seven heads and ten horns will become the army of Satan. So what do these groups do? It tells that they fight in the war. The spirit fights against the spirit and the flesh fights against the flesh. If the spirits are victorious in this war, there will also be victory in the physical world. This is because the spirit and the flesh become one and fight in the war together. Now, we will find out about the war inside Revelation and the result of these war. It is not an exaggeration to say that the history of the Bible is a history of war. Revelation is also a story of war. There are three wars inside Revelation. The first war is in Revelation 13. The chosen people of the Tabernacle of Heaven fought against the beasts with seven heads and ten horns. The group of the beasts won, and sadly, the chosen people lost. Then, the second war in today's chapter of Revelation 12, the male child and the brothers were victorious, and the group of the beasts lost. It is a very fortunate outcome. I will also talk about what an amazing work of God happens as the child and the brothers were victorious. And the third war, it is the content of Revelation 16. It is the content about the war of Armageddon. This will be explained in great detail in Revelation 16. When Revelation is fulfilled, we must know very well that there will be a war between God's army and Satan's army. Truth and lies will be discerned through the word of Revelation in this spiritual war. Then, the result of the war in this chapter is that the dragon and his angels are defeated and thrown out from heaven to earth. Then, when is the time when the dragon was thrown out? That time will be after the 42 months when the period of destruction has come to an end. To reiterate, as the dragon is defeated in this war, he is ejected. Then where is he ejected from? It is a place called heaven. This heaven was a church of the seven golden lampstand where the group of the dragon has entered into. The earth that the dragon was thrown out to it was a world of mere flesh without the Holy Spirit that is betrayed and became one with the world. Therefore, the dragon being thrown out was being ejected from the heaven to the world. The heaven was a church of the seven golden lampstand. The reason why the dragon was thrown out, it was because it lost a child to the war. What happens next, we will see in the following content. Let's read Revelation 12, 10 to 12. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been held down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. Yes, as we now look at verse 10 to 11, there are very important content inside here. It is told by a loud voice in heaven. Then it says, Now. This now is a very important point. Why is it so important? Because it continues on to say that now have come the salvation, power, and the kingdom of our God and authority of Christ. 
And through the words of verse 11, it says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, right? This victory is a very important content. Then, we need to look at when exactly is this time of now. This time of now, it is after fighting and overcoming the group of the dragon. It means they were victorious in the war against the dragon. In today's time of fulfillment of Revelation, the child that was born from the woman with the sun, moon, and stars is able to overcome the group of the dragon that invaded the tabernacle. And from this point of time, it says now what is fulfilled salvation, power, kingdom, and authority of God. Therefore, from this time onwards, it means there is God's kingdom and salvation. This content is especially so important for us. It means before this time, there was no kingdom of God, salvation, nor power. This, of course, is very shocking. That is why this content is so important to us. At the time of the first coming, Jesus was a savior who fought and overcame Satan. At the time of the second coming, the child fights and overcomes the dragon and therefore becomes a savior. This is because it is written that salvation is only possible from the time when there is a victory. We carried a diligent life of faith so far in our lives in order to receive God's kingdom and salvation. However, about the fact that salvation begins only through the victory in Revelation 12, we must carefully think about this once again, isn't it? This book of Revelation is given by Jesus, who came at the first coming and ascended to heaven. Then, as Jesus came to his disciple John, revealed the prophecy of Revelation. However, Revelation is not something of a past. We must know that they are the events of today and they must be fulfilled as written. All believers who have the hope of heaven and eternal life must know and believe in these events. This is absolute. Then as it states that now there is God's kingdom and salvation, let's look into this more detail. Then how was it before this time? The time before would be when there was no kingdom of God nor salvation. That was before. And from this time of now, which is after the victory, finally there is God's kingdom and salvation. In Revelation 6 and 13, there was a first heaven and first earth, but as they were destroyed, God's kingdom disappeared. And thereby, there is a newly created new heaven and new earth. In Revelation 7, it is the new spiritual Israel 12 tribes. In Revelation 21, it is the newly created new heaven, new earth. In Revelation 11, verse 15, it says, The sound of the seventh trumpet. Through that sound, the kingdom of the world is changed to the kingdom of God. Also, in Daniel 2, it says it is the eternal kingdom of God that will never be destroyed. Also in Revelation 15, verse 4 to 5, it is the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony that all nations will come and worship. Therefore, there is now the physical reality of the kingdom of God that is created through the victory over the dragon. The reality of that kingdom is a nation that has been created, also started through the one overcomes new John. This time is 14th of March 1984, the date of establishment of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Temple of the Tamaric of the Testimony. We must certainly check whether this is according to God's word and fulfilled according to the promise of the Bible. Also, in Revelation 11 verse 15, through the last seven trumpet sound, the kingdom of the world changes to kingdom of God. That process is recorded in Revelation 7. After the 144,000 are sealed, there will be a multitude of people coming out from a great tribulation. Then how are these great multitude of people coming out? They hear the seven trumpet sound among the great tribulation. According to that promise, the Shincheonji 12 tribes have become created, and at the time of the great tribulation happening worldwide, 
the last seven trumpet sound is coming out. This Revelation seminar that you are now listening to is the seven trumpet sound that is being sounded to the whole world. It is truly a great trumpet sound. The brothers who fought against the dragon and overcame. They are the small group of people who have become one with the one overcomes. The one overcomes is the one who has seen and heard the events of the betrayal and destru destruction, testified it, and fought and overcame. Then what was their weapon that they used to fight? It was the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. It was not a worldly physical weapon, but it was the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The blood of the Lamb is Jesus' love for the redemption and the word of Jesus. This blood of Jesus is mentioned in Revelation 5, that the kingdom and priests are purchased by the blood of Jesus. In Revelation 7, it says, Through the blood of Jesus, there are those who are washed as white, receiving atonement of sin. The word of their testimony is the word testifying, the identity of the dragon. It is the word of revelation. This word of revelation becomes a weapon to seize the dragon. It is a weapon to fight and overcome the dragon. This is because the identity of the dragon is written inside the word of Revelation. Then we must know the evidence of the one who is victorious and one who is defeated inside Revelation, right? We cannot just blindly say someone has won or someone has lost. The evidence of the winner and the loser is clearly recorded inside the Bible. Then who will be the entity of the one who is victorious? It is not simply a matter to say, I've overcome, but by overcoming, one must create the new spiritual Israel, 12 tribes. Then what happens to the one who is defeated? They will flee in seven directions, which is the evidence of the one who is defeated. Therefore, as the one overcomes created the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel, and the ones who is defeated flee to seven directions. This will be the evidence of the one who won and lost. Then who are the ones who fought and overcame the dragon who get to dwell in heaven? They are the male child and his brothers who fought and overcame the group of the dragon. Next, we must know what is the meaning of the earth and sea that receives woe from the dragon. Firstly, the earth is referring to the chosen people of the tabernacle that betrayed. The sea is a world that belongs to the beast. Then, there must be a reason why the dragon is angry, isn't it? This is because according to Revelation 20 verse 2, the dragon knows that there are not many days left before he will be seized and locked in the abyss. That's why he's angry. So, where does Satan eventually become thrown into? It tells us that it will eventually be thrown and locked in the abyss. Now, we will read verse 13 till 17. When the dragon saw that he had been hurt to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert, where she will be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time, out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river, to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening his mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman, and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Yes, the dragon thrown out from heaven in this chapter persecutes the woman who is giving birth to the child. At this time, the woman was given two wings of an eagle, so she might fly to a place prepared for her in the desert for a time, times, and half a time. Then what is the reason why the dragon that was thrown out persecuted the woman? As we see the reason, it was because the woman has given birth to the child to rule all nation, and that's why the dragon pursued and persecuted the woman. Because of this child, the dragon lost in the war and was thrown out from heaven. Furthermore, he has lost all authority to rule all nations. That is why the dragon pursued and persecuted the woman.
When we see the Bible, there are people who persecute and there are those who receive the persecution. We should also think about what kind of entity I am. And now, let's look at the meaning of the woman receiving two wings of an eagle flying to avoid the serpent the dragon. Firstly, it's about the eagle. The eagle was referring to the four living creatures in Revelation 4. And being given the two wings of flying means that the pastor of the tabernacle was guided by the four living creatures and went to the desert. This is like the content in Exodus 19 verse 4, that God carried the people on eagles' wings and brought you to myself, it said. However, the people of Israel were not actually carried on eagles in reality, right? They walked out of Egypt. So, it is the same meaning to how the people of Israel were brought out from Egypt by the four living creatures. Next, what is the meaning of the woman being taken care of for a time, times, and half a time? Desert is a place people do not live. So would anyone flee to such a place? How would it be for you? Then now, let's look into the desert that the woman fled to. The meaning of the desert is a spiritual desert where there is no word of truth. Here it says, it is a place that is prepared for her. As we saw in verse 6, it was a place that God prepared for and it is a place that the woman must go to and be taken care of. And that's the reason why it is called a place that is prepared for her. And also, God said this woman will be raised up for 1,260 days there in the desert. In verse 6, but it is also referred here as a time, times, and half a time. In other words, three and a half times. A time is meaning a year as shown in the footnote of Daniel 12 verse 7. Therefore, three and a half times is three and a half years, and this is the same as 1,260 days. Then what does it mean to be taken care of at that place? This means the pastor of the tabernacle temple that betrayed went to a place where there is no word of God and learned the Gentile doctrines. This event of the woman fleeing to be taken care of is similar to the event of Prophet Elijah at the time of the Old Testament. In 1 Kings chapter 17, Prophet Elijah fled from the presence of Jezebel and fled to Kerith Ravine and ate the bread and meat that the ravens brought him for three and a half years. This event is figuratively used to describe the events of the woman fleeing to the desert in Revelation. Also, this woman is a messenger who prepares a way of the second coming, just like John the Baptist at the first coming, who came in the spirit of Elijah. Just like John the Baptist lived in the desert, the woman also fled to the desert. This event was fulfilled as a representative pastor of Tabernacle Temple in Gwacheon, Korea, went to overseas, learned the Gentile doctrines at that place. It's also mentioned that there's a water that the serpent spewed out from its mouth that was enough to sweep the people away. Also about the earth that swallowed the water of the river. Now, there cannot be any serpent large enough to spew water capable to sweep people away, nor can there be an earth that swallows water, right? What do you think? It is surprising words, but these are not physical, but they are spiritual. Then, what is the water that comes out from the mouth of the serpent? It is referring to the false truth and words of criticism and slander. The water of the river spewed out by the serpent was a word coming out from the mouth of the destroyer that the spirit of Satan has entered into. It was a word of slander spewed forth to the woman. Then what does it mean by the earth swallowing up the water coming out from the serpent's mouth? This means the congregation members of the tabernacle that has betrayed, that are like the earth, heard about the faults of their pastor, however protected and covered his faults. This means the congregation members of the tabernacle did not criticize the pastor who raised them up, but rather protected them. If someone is cursing at one's parents, there will be no one who will curse their parents together, right? It will be the same logic. 
Next, they are the remaining offspring of the woman the dragon is trying to fight. Who are they? They are the male child and brothers who fought against the dragon. The shore of the sea where the dragon stood is referring to the countless believers of the world that are under false truth. This content is that Satan that was thrown out gathers the believers of the world to wage war again with the remaining offspring of the woman, thus the ones who are victorious. Since this war is the War of Armageddon, we will look at this Armageddon War in chapter 16 in more detail. Now, did we listen well to what was shared so far? Now, through the conclusion of chapter 12 of Revelation, we will summarize once again. Now, the conclusion is that the woman clothed with the sun, moon, and stars in the tabernacle of heaven gives birth in front of the dragon, then flees to the desert. The male child and his brothers fight against the dragon and are victorious with the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. Now, because of this victory, it's from this time of now, right? I told you that this time of now is very important. This is because God's salvation, kingdom, power, and authority are all fulfilled at this time. Therefore, the one overcomes becomes the new spiritual Israel. Therefore, the one overcomes harvests, seals, and creates the twelve tribes of God's new kingdom. This is the purpose of the book of Revelation and the purpose of God. Through chapter 12 of Revelation, we looked into the reality of the three entities. We cannot say that one is a betrayer, destroyer, or savior without any evidence. Isn't it because there is a physical reality that has been fulfilled, and that is the reason why we can testify the physical entities? And we must clearly know that salvation, kingdom of God, that has appeared from the time of the victory against the group of the dragon, and we must belong to this salvation and kingdom. In the next session, the words of Revelation 13 will be proclaimed, which is about the chosen people who received the mark from the beast and betrayed. This is also an unprecedented word as a physical fulfillment has appeared in today's time. Therefore, I hope you will be with us next time as well. Many people are becoming one with this word through this Revelation seminar. Being one with the Word is to be one with God and Jesus. Now, let us all become one through this Word. In that sense, it would be nice to shout out, We are one together. I will go first. We are one. We are one! Yes, now let us pray to God with the same heart. To the Lord of eternal life, the origin of all blessings, our Holy Father God, today, please receive all glory that we offer you. Through the Shincheonji Revelation Seminar, we truly thank you that these words of the physical fulfillment of Revelation can be spread to the whole world. Today, through the words of Revelation 12, we saw the content of the war between God and the dragon. Please allow us to realize all the words that we heard. And for all the pastors and saints and theological students who heard these words, please help them to realize so that we can all become the children of faith following your words. For all the people participating at this place, all the spirits of the people that are gathered, please allow your loving grace to be filled with them all. We can all realize the word that we heard. It will not finish by just me listening, but spreading it to all the people around me so that they can also hear the words of the physical fulfillment of Revelation through your guidance. Through this Revelation seminar, truly, the seven trumpet sound is sounding, and we thank you for doing the work as the kingdom of the world is changing to the kingdom of God. Please allow your love and grace to be fully filled with all the people gathered, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus, who has died for the atonement of our sins. Amen.